So here we go. So I'm from Bernie, a small village on the Northern Cheyenne Reservation in southeastern Montana. It's a quiet village where prairie dog burps and mosquito farts barely disturbed the village. <laughs> Until the advent of the telephone in the mid-1990s, my only entertainment other than Poket Village dogs with a stick were stories my Cheyenne mother and Lakota father told me. I grew up as a little kid being surrounded by a rich history from my dad and my mother's side of the family. One of the stories that is taught to every little child in my village is the creation story. In the beginning, there were no trees, no hills, no people. It was, except, it was empty except for water and birds. Though there were ducks, swans, and other birds that swam. One day, the creator decided to create land and asked the birds to send one of themselves into the ocean to bring him mud. Immediately, the swan said, I'll go. I'm the most elegant and the prettiest. And he immediately dove into the water and soon returned empty-handed. And so all the other birds tried, tall birds, fat birds, skinny birds, but none reached the bottom until there was only the mud hen. And so she dutifully dove down into the ocean and she was gone a long time. Then she came back with a drop of soil. And so the creator took the soil in his hands and created all the land that we know and all the land creatures that we know. This story and many others like it have inspired me to do computational research on indigenous oral history. This story, for instance, is served by tribes across North America, including the Montana. There are several of such, there are many of several, many such stories that are shared by us and are considered unique to our continent by Western anthropologists. In the summer of 20, 2014, my interest in oral histories landed me the opportunity to travel to Russia. There were five of us. Along with four other Native American students, Don, Michelle, Sierra, and Avery, we went on an NSF-funded expedition to Siberia, where we pursued our individual interest in indigenous cultural, policy, and environmental issues. This expedition was a joint effort between MSU Bozeman and the Gorno Ataya State University in Russia. We spent six weeks in Russia, where we toured Moscow, but our destination was the Altai state in Siberia. The Altai is about 6,000 miles from Bozeman and is the very center of the Eurasian continent. Seen here in yellow, it is on Russia's border with Kazakhstan, China, and Mongolia. If you were to balance the Eurasian continent on your finger, it would, it would be, that's, this is where it would be in the, uh, the Altai. The Altai is the furthest point on Earth from the oceans, and the locals call it the belly button of the world. The Altai state has the same weather, elevation, latitude, and ecology as Montana. It's big sky country, but Russian. <laughs> and they even have excellent skiing. The motivation of this trip was to compare the indigenous tribes of Altai and Montana. Because of our mutual environments being so similar, the question was, how do the peoples compare? For me, the question was, what kind of stories do they tell? For our Altaian hosts, they welcomed us and wanted to know everything about us Native Americans. They also proudly shared their culture without restraint. Here you can see the Altai chiefs greeting us at a ceremonial dinner. Though they are patriarchal, they have women chiefs. Wherever we went, we also went, were well fed. The Altaians believe they are descendants of the wolf and can be seen here celebrating their heritage with the wolf dance. Because the Altai is the belly button of the world and the most sacred spot on earth, the Altai are tasked with protecting the heart of humanity, with warriors, and importantly, literacy. The Altaians are highly literate. 80% of them can speak and write their own native language. They have a grassroots publishing industry preserving their culture. 
They even have a small library of books dedicated to the Lakota and other American Indian tribes. Here's one of them. Though their worldview is centered upon sheep and animal husbandry, which is demonstrated by their crafts, the Altaians express a strong spiritual kinship with Native Americans. In every lodge we visited, the men would proudly trot out their painted ponies, while the grandmas would list off unmarried granddaughters and grandsons. <laughs> we regularly fended off marriage proposals, some more than others, and this oddly amused my wife. <laughs> Amazingly, during our expedition, I encountered the Cheyenne creation story. Four of them, in fact. And the only difference was that the protagonist was not a noble mud hen, but a flawed and foolish human, like the rest of us. And like in America, foolish colonialism, from the Tsars to the Soviets, have threatened the Altaian culture and land. But like the American Indians, they persevere amidst European monuments to their progress against nature. This is a monument to all the fallen who built the road in the Altai. This presentation is merely a slice of what happened in the, uh, on the expedition. For instance, there's a whole industry built around the Wild West. Here you can see Russians with shoe polish on their face playing authentic Native American techno spirit flute. And here's us about to get lost in the Moscow underground. And at the very last picture there, it was uh, us using the rivers like an interstate. LAUGHTER